Now this dump file happens to be about 20 megs, so there's a fair amount of information here. Uh, there's the Windows path, so there's all the environmental variables that the application's aware of. Um, and if you look quickly, you might see my iTunes password. And there's my username in iTunes. And so all the date strings that exist in iTunes, all the formatting, the international support, I mean, anything that would be in a typical drop down or dialog box in iTunes will appear in this memory dump. And just, I mean, there's going to be a lot of information. So I'll just continue on here. Um, one of the next things you should do is obviously take a look at your network settings. Um, take a look at what your gateway is set to and make sure that uh, that makes sense for the logical layout of the network. Um, what your DNS servers are. Uh, sometimes someone might be using their own DNS server and if they have their own DNS set up, uh, something as innocent as going to Google may actually be uh, some other site or something like that. So you always want to pay attention and look for anomalies with that sort of stuff. The PS info command uh, will give you information about the system. So specifically if we're looking for things like um, what uh, operating system is it, what service packs are installed, um, basically get a fingerprint for the system. We can see what updates have been applied um, and things like that. Uh, what applications are installed, uh, when the updates were installed, and how long has the system been running for, uh, the operating system version, all that sort of stuff. Uh, what the network card is, what current uh, drive statuses look like, um, so the PS info actually extracts a lot of useful information. I mean, things like what applications are installed, what service packs, that's not necessarily uh, volatile, but it is something that is uh, worth collecting while you're in there examining. At this point, we might want to examine uh, and basically take a snapshot of the file system and all the files, size, modification time, and things like that. And one method of getting this sort of information is to use the find command from the Unix utils and basically using a printf output format we can search for all files on the C drive or whatever drive you're investigating and what we're doing here is we're pulling off the various attributes of the files right there's the file name the file size uh, the modification time uh, permissions things like that so we can send this to I'll just pause this page by page um, so you can see all the different files, where they're located, and what we're doing here is we're putting a semicolon between each of the different attributes, and what this will allow you to do is pull it into a spreadsheet such that if we're looking for a particular incident that happened within a certain time frame, we can quickly identify which files have been modified and when. Now, it's often important to discover who has been on a system and what times where they logged in and things like that. And typically in a networked environment you'd obtain those from the domain controllers. Um, but if in the case if you don't have those sort of machines and you're just working locally on a system, uh, there is the ability in Windows to log those sort of events. And um, NT last will pull uh, any sort of uh, audit logs that exist if they're turned on. Now the default in Windows XP Professional is not to audit when someone logs in and out. And those are things that, um, I mean, if the, the information doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. So that's not uh, really something you can track in this case. Um, you may want to uh, take a look at um, any sort of log information. Uh, that would show up in Event Viewer. Um, so if we look at the system log 
um, we can see what's going on there and sort of determine if there is anything that we're concerned with. Um, specifically, um, if you want to look at, say, the security log, uh, you can specify minus S minus X and security. And that will show you what's in the security log. And in this case, there's nothing simply because we don't have any auditing turned on on the system. So if we were, were auditing the system correctly, uh, this would show us when someone logged in and things like that. Now, if we want to examine what local accounts exist on the system, uh, we can extract that information using uh, the password dump uh, tool. And if we say password dump localhost, it will go in and not only extract what accounts exist, but also what the passwords are. Uh, obviously, they'll be encrypted, but we can run uh, various password crackers if we want to try and uh, brute force crack those passwords. Um, so that sort of information is useful simply because um, if we want to examine uh, who has an account on the system, uh, we want to know what profiles exist and uh, kind of who we're looking at on the system. That'll tell us how many accounts we have. Uh, the next command is access check, and access check is useful for getting all sorts of system information. Uh, for example, if we want what security policies exist on the system, uh, if we spell access check correctly, um, we can see uh, what policies are set and who they're set for and what's in forest and what's not in forest and this helps get us a baseline uh, if we're investigating an incident where there was a security breach um, maybe after the fact we can identify maybe there was a weakness in a policy access check can also be used to extract um, other information uh, for instance we can extract the file system permissions and we can identify on the C drive for instance uh, who has which permissions to which uh, folders and anything that's set uh, on the system. Uh, so this again helps establish a good security baseline. Uh, often in an investigation, we want to see which files have been accessed. Now the problem with doing this sort of investigation is often uh, this will, just by scanning the file system, that will update the timestamps of uh, last access. So there is a tool out there called AFIND and if we for instance know that we want to see uh, what's happened on the last three days on the system, um, we can tell uh, what files have been accessed or modified uh, within the last three days. And part of the same tool set is hfind, which goes through the file system and will find any hidden files that exist on the system and display uh, where they're located. So, I mean, again, this is handy for trying to find those trojans and backdoors and all sorts of nasty stuff that uh, is trying to hide from you. So as far as commands go, um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you take a look at the link on their website, there's a whole list of where you can obtain all the software that I've used in this demonstration. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time.